Four minutes after seven o'clock in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder how many people know about Winston Spree Simon or Ellie Manette or, or so many of the others uh, at, at, at the very uh, early days of the establishment of the steel pan in uh, the 1930s, just around that time. Well, I don't know if you really emphasize that as part uh, of our history, but good to have you with us as we continue into the second hour of Morning Edition. By the way, uh, we're trying to get confirmation on what appears to be a shooting incident at uh, Irving Street in Pittiburgh in San Juan area, uh, where we understand and we're getting confirmation from the police that there have been two fatalities, two critically injured and two others injured. Uh, so uh, some sort of shooting taking place in that area overnight and we'll try to get some more detail before we wrap up our show uh, this morning. But let's deal with another issue and we, in fact we touched on it uh, in our discussion earlier in relation to those negotiations with the chief personal officer because trade unionists will be gathering in San Fernando tomorrow to commemorate May Day which actually is observed on May the 1st worldwide. Of course our Labor Day is June the 19th for reasons that have to take us back to 1937. It's the first time since the pandemic that supporters will be allowed to gather and will take on its traditional format. Trade union leaders will be speaking at the start of the march and as customary upon reaching Harris Promenade, the feature address will be given. Uh, the president of the joint trade union movement, Ansel Roger, will be the feature speaker addressing key issues such as the cost of living, subsidies and the selling out of state assets. Well, to give us a perspective on what we could look forward to, we are joined by Trevor Johnson, the GTM Assistant General Secretary. Mr. Johnson, very good morning to you. Last week we were speaking to you uh, in, in a very different context, a very tragic situation as far as women being the victims of, of domestic violence. Uh, at, at least this time, uh, thankfully, we're talking about something different, but no less troubling for the trade union movement. Good morning to you. Tell us what's going to be happening tomorrow. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Fazir. Good morning to you and to all uh, uh, viewers and, and listeners. And uh, just to indicate, we, we had, in a sense, a, a somewhat closing chapter of that tragic event yesterday with the funeral of our sister, uh, Comrade Shasa Alfonso David, who was, as you indicated, uh, tragically killed over the Easter weekend. But I, I just want to quickly turn uh, the attention to uh, the events in San Fernando tomorrow by the trade union movement. Uh, that would be May Day. And just to indicate and clarify for some for zero, uh, May Day is really Sunday, May the 1st, international. That's international. May Day or International Workers' Day, as it is called. Uh, the trade union uh, movement, uh, led by the joint trade union movement, would have made a decision to have our March rally and other May Day observances on Saturday. That's tomorrow, April the 30th. And this would be out of a mark of respect for the Muslim community who would be celebrating uh, or observing Eid on Sunday. So we didn't want to have a, a, bit, a bit of a clash of, of activities or events. So that, that is why the event is going to be held tomorrow uh, in San Fernando. We are going to be assembling at uh, uh, the OWTU building, or our, our circular road in, in San Fernando for 9 a.m. Uh, every trade union leader uh, will be bringing a short, a short statement or greetings and then we will start the march from just outside of OWTU and we would proceed uh, through the streets of San Fernando as approved by the uh, Commissioner of Police. So just to mention in passing, we do have uh, police permission for the march and rally to take place uh, tomorrow. We will end at Paris Promenade, where as you would have indicated earlier, uh, Comrade Ansel Roger will deliver uh, an address um, at, at that point and which will cover of course um, many of the issues which are affecting uh, workers, um, trade unions and even citizens of Trinidad and Tobago at, at, at this time uh, for zero. And so um, 
Yeah. Yeah, and, and I suppose so, the, the fact that, you, that the, the, this is being adjusted in recognition of the fact that some may actually be observing Eid al-Fitr on the Sunday, some will on the Monday of the holiday, and maybe even some on the, the, the Tuesday, that will be appreciated. It's interesting as well that the UAE Islamic Society has highlighted the fact that their exam, exams scheduled on Monday and with their best efforts, they've been unable to have those exams adjusted uh, to accommodate those Muslim students who would like to observe uh, Eid al-Fitr on that day. But, but that's, that's another matter. Uh, but just yeah. in relation to the, to the theme of tomorrow's event, and, and I suppose many, the, the cynics will say, well, you know, it could be the usual thing. Cost the government, cost capitalists, cost the private sector, say that it's time to rumble and so on. What, what, what do you think will be the tenor? Any, any, any difference in the tone? of the event coming up tomorrow? Well, well, first of all, Fazi, we always um, seek to highlight one of the, the historical perspective, first of all, of uh, May Day, International Workers' Day. Uh, many, many people may not be fully aware of the historical fact of the, the fact that most people work an eight-hour workday now. And um, part of the genesis of May Day was really the fight for the eight-hour workday and bring in what we now call today work-life balance so that workers can work eight hours uh, eight or, um, hours or thereabout. They have time for rest and they also have time uh, social for social interaction uh, with their families, etc. We tend to take it for granted because um, one observer would have said that trade union rights soon become social norms and it just, it becomes embedded in the society. But that, that historical factor of May Day and International Workers' Day should not be lost on us. And what happens with, with uh, every May Day is that there's an opportunity for workers, for trade unions, and even members of the public who may want to participate, because they are not excluded. Um, there are issues facing people at the workplace. Uh, during the last two years, we have had the pandemic. We have had a lot of issues coming up um, that were, were relatively new, both to employers and to trade unions. We have had to fight to address those. Some of them have not been resolved. And uh, this uh, May Day is an opportunity to, to highlight uh, that, highlight issues, for example, the increase in um, fuel prices. Um, and some may ask, well, what's the big thing? Well, the, well, part of the big thing, for example, is that there are many persons, both in the private and public sector, who are traveling officers. They are required to travel from one point to another to do their jobs. With that increase in fuel prices, apart from impacting them personally at a family level, it also impacts their pocket on the job because um, unless there's an adjustment in their traveling allowances, they automatically have that increased cost to, to, to meet but in order to do the job of the um, required by the employer. So the, these are that's just one impact, of course, of the uh, increase in fuel prices. We know it's a trigger for just about everything else in, in, in the economy. Um, during the, 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 the lockdown, we would have had a lot of retrenchment, a lot of layoffs, and you know, trade unions have been battling to seek to resolve some of these issues. We are not naive to the, the challenges that would have faced uh, some employers, of course, during that period. But we have seen instances where it can be considered that uh, there have been unfair and unjust treatment of workers. So that May Day would be an opportunity for workers themselves to come out to be able to sort of, um, by their participation, they will, they will be expressing their concern. Uh, we have many um, um, Workplaces, for example, where workers have had either cuts or zero, zero, zero offers on the table. Um, I know you'd have spoken earlier to a couple of my colleagues about the negotiations with the CPO, and that is also an, an area and highlight of concern. Because I, and I, workers... I, was going, I was going in that direction, Trevor Johnson, because in speaking with Mr. Beek, that, that the the early discussion didn't sound very promising. Not, 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 not at all, and I, I didn't have an opportunity to hear because I was on a, another um, interview earlier. But the point is, um, we workers um, in the pub in the public sector are on two thousand and fourteen salaries, and there are even some that that, that are further back. We would have highlighted, you know, workers at Cipriani College, um, Cardi, etc., on two thousand and four, two thousand and seven, two thousand and eleven salaries. 
but we are in 2022. And the thing that is always current for zero um, would be um, prices, you know, whether it's be food prices, um, whatever, because once commodity prices go up internationally, it, we almost seem to get an immediate impact on the prices um, here in Trinidad and Tobago and, of course, elsewhere. And our simple but weak reasonable argument is uh, there needs to be uh, salaries, wages and salaries need to keep up with the cost of living. And, and therefore, you cannot have workers and you cannot have uh, this situation where we are um, somewhat eight, eight years or 10 years uh, behind in terms of, of um, wages and salaries. But you are seeing a situation where government is saying, well, due to um, you know price liberalization, et cetera, they are unable to do anything about, the, about prices and the cost of living. So the, these are things that concern us for zero. We know that there has been a signal and uh, what appears to be the start of negotiations with the, with the CPO. Um, those have not come off to a very promising start with the CPO already um, setting parameters, you, you know, and boundaries where, you, you know, these things are not up for discussion. But free and free negotiations require everything to be on the table um, all parties to seek to be reasonable. But the CPO by by his stance have started off saying that this is not the this is not on, this is not on, etc. So it doesn't really um, send a, a, a good signal um, to workers and to the uh, trade unions uh, and, um, and in the, Trinidad I and Tobago that and have therefore, to as a final, As a final question, Trevor Johnson, before time runs out and it's just over a minute's time, I know we've headlined it as May Day celebrations, but is it really a mood of celebration or uh, an assessment of the realities facing, facing the working class? Just as a final thought. Yes, well, it, 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 it is in a sense both because um, May Day, yes, it, it, yes, Fazir, we cannot hide from that um, May Day and of course Labor Day, which is ca coming up not too far from now on June 19th. Uh, yes, there's always an assessment, not so much just of the government, but of the state of play of things in the economy, the state of play in the society. Um, trade unions are concerned about crime as well because our, our members are affected by crime and i just heard you made reference to a shooting this morning that you're seeking to get further details on but whenever there's a, there's crime in the in the society chances are workers and households are affected so that is our concern as well may Day is also a celebration because as i said there have been there have been um battles won over the years they they, they are you know the, the eight hour work day and many other battles you know through advocacy um, in, in championing uh, these particular issues over the years. So it is a celebration, but it is also an assessment of the state of play of the economy and issues facing workers in Trinidad and Tobago today. I hear you on that, Trevor Johnson. Thank you very much for taking the time and clarifying why it's being held tomorrow rather than on Sunday with due deference uh, to the Muslim community, who may actually, some may actually be observing Eid al-Fitr on the Sunday itself. Thank you very much yeah. for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for the You're more than welcome. Trevor Johnson, uh, the General Secretary of uh, JTAM, uh, offering that perspective on uh, the uh, media event scheduled uh, for tomorrow, 717 in Trinidad and Tobago. Here's a submission by Steve in Rusalak. He calls Moonlight in Mayaro on a Sunday night. Very nice and very breezy with that image as well as we go to the break. No, this really inspired him to a great extent. So he continued pounding until he formed this new instrument. Oh God, everybody wants.